Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Guru Deva Jaya Guru Deva Guru Deva Jaya 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 Guru Deva Guru Parampara, Guru Parampara, Guru Parampara, Guru Parampara, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Thank you for doing kirtan. <laughs> Thank you for doing kirtan. Thank you for being my god brothers. Thank you for looking after me. <laughs> Jai Shri Radhe, 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 Shri No, she's not coming on the listen from distance. But when she hears that the class is ending, she comes to the party. But yeah, she's listening. She says she even walks on the way. Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Stoti Bhava Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama That's okay? okay. Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> Bande Ham Shri Guru Shri Jutaha Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Shri Rupam Sardajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Bitam Tam Sajiva Sadvaitam Sabadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Taitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sadhana Lalita Shivisha Khan Vitamstra Om Agyanati Miramasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tatsmai Shri Gurabe Namaha <coughs> Mukam Kuroti Vachalam Pangam Langayate Virim Yat Kripa Tamaham Bande Shri Gurun Dinataranam Vansha Kalpata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Yaevacha Patitanam Pavanayo Vaishnavayo Namo 
Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Pudayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaurati Shri Namaha <clears throat> Hey Krishna Karna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatapade Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Vishabhanu Sute Deye <coughs> Vrindai Tulsi Devai Priyai Keshavasya Cha Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satya Vachai Namo Namaha Pancha Tadvatmakam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda <coughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare <coughs> So first of all, I'm offering my unlimited danda bhat pranam and my shraddha pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Gurudev, Nitya Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pada Paramahansa, Ashtotarasata Sri Srila, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada. And then I'm offering my same unlimited dandavat pranams and my shraddha pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Devs. Nitya Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Ashtatara Sata Srishila, Bhakti Rakshak Sridhar Goswami Maharaj. And Nityalila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Ashto Tarasata Sri Shila, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. <clears throat> and my Dandavat Pranams to all of my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Gaudiya Guru Varga. And my Dandavat Pranams to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavi. Just to mention, today I got an email from Kalimba Didi, and uh, she mentioned that on Gurudev's Wikipedia page, there's a citation there saying something about, I forget the wording, but how uh, it's due for deletion or something like that. So then I clicked on it, and I was reading for like a half an hour all the different rules of Wikipedia, she was asking me, do I have editing rights or something like that? I don't quite understand. But, um, yeah, they've got a lot of different rules and stuff um, and procedures, you know. So apparently at this stage, there's some problem. And it can arise from a lot of different causes, believe me. I mean, from what I was reading... I can't even begin to, because I only read it very quickly, just once. But some some persons, they may be challenging. It could be Ritvik people, it could be anybody, you know. But there are certain rules, and uh, if it goes into deletion, then there's an appeal process and so many particulars. But I read through what was on there. I went, read through Gurudev's, you know, it's kind of like a short biographical sketch of him. Mm -hmm. And 
and there's they, they also said plagiarism or something like that. The, no, they didn't say that, but I'm saying that could be one of the things, but I don't see anything like that there at all. Which means that... Or you're using somebody, with, somebody has something copyrighted. Oh, that, yeah, maybe it's not plagiarism. You know, because you know, yeah. maybe this will help the Wikipedia page. Because um, in 2010, I was the final copy editor for the Encyclopedia of Hinduism. Yeah. And they allowed me to enter Srila Gurudev's name in the okay. encyclopedia. Okay. But what we did is we just copied from, from the soul. It was a recently published book, Journey of the Soul. Yeah. And we just took that and put it on mm. and then cited it yeah. as the reference. There was only one citation. But they let it pass because, you know, it's kind of like a favor. <coughs> yeah. And uh, so... If Kalimba, whoever does have editing rights, she doesn't. That's why she was writing to me and asking me. Well, someone can reference. Well, he's listed it in the Encyclopedia of Hinduism. It's the only Encyclopedia right. of Hinduism out there. One thing that I did notice, and this needs to be looked at a little bit, is there's a way where if it's been challenged and it goes through some kind of process, then it comes to some some particular stage where it can never be deleted. And that's what we need to get to with that. That's what we need to get to. Certainly, somebody in the Sangha has some editing. Well, I'm mentioning it to you specifically because you're an editor. Well, I know somebody who is an editor at Wikipedia. That's um, our godbrother in Orange County, Suresh. Okay. So I can... Yeah, maybe you can run this by him. I'll copy the email. Okay. No, it was a messenger. Yes. Okay. Oh, I'll send it and send it to you. Okay, please. Yeah. I mean, if there's something that I can do, but I don't even understand it. Maybe so he a... does, and so maybe this very weekend I'm going yeah. to see him. We can work on it. Oh, okay. favorable. I can work on it. Okay. Okay. To, uh, okay, that would be wonderful. Maybe he can do some seva. Yeah. It will okay. mm -hmm. get some benefit. Lots of benefit. Okay, just reading the last little bit from the end of Srila Prabhupada's purport before we move on to uh, Srila Gurudev's book and the three Acharyas. When human society gives up these elementary faults enumerated by Srila Rupa Goswami, meaning Atyahara, etc., all enmity will cease between men and animals, capitalists and communists, and so forth. <clears throat> In addition, all problems of economic or political maladjustment and instability will be solved. This pure consciousness is awakened by the proper spiritual education and practice offered scientifically by the Krishna Consciousness Movement. This Krishna Consciousness Movement offers a spiritual community that can bring about a peaceful condition in the world. Every intelligent man should purify his consciousness and rid himself of the above-mentioned six hindrances to devotional service by taking wholehearted shelter of this Krishna Consciousness Movement. I mean, can anyone write like that? Prabhupada, is, he's unique. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada ki Okay, now we're going to move over to Gurudev's um, book. And we're still on the same verse, verse number two, which is in this book, it's titled, The Six, Six Impediments to Bhakti. We'll read the verse again. So we can say it together. Atyahara. Prayashascha, 
Pas de jaloux de pas. Donc, on ne doit plus. On ne doit plus. Responsible. Atyahara Prayashascha. Atyahara Prayashascha. Prajalpa Niyamagraha. Prajalpa Niyamagraha. Janasangascha Lulyamcha. Janasangascha Lulyamcha. Janasangascha Lulyamcha. Janasangascha Lulyamcha. Shadbir Bhakti, Shadbir Bhaktir Vinashyati, Shadbir Bhaktir Vinashyati. D6 destroy Bhakti. Translation. Atyahara, Atyahara, eating too much, eating too much, or accumulating more than necessary, or accumulating more than necessary. Prayashaha, Prayashaha, endeavors opposed to bhakti, endeavors opposed to bhakti, cha, cha, cha. and, and. Prajalpaha. prajalpaha, unessential and mundane talks, unessential and mundane talks, niyamagraha, niyamagraha, abandoning the rules prescribed for one's eligibility. Abandoning the rules prescribed for one's eligibility. Or adopting those rules that are meant for others. Or adopting those rules that are meant for others. Cha, cha, cha and, and, and adopting, adopting uh, sorry, janasangaha, janasangaha, association with world. Association with worldly and sensualistic persons. Association with women or men who are attached to women. Association with women or men who are attached to women. Association with Mayavadis, atheists, and other non-devotees. Association with Mayavadis, atheists, and other non-devotees. Cha and Lolyam. Greed or the restlessness of the mind. Greed or the restlessness of the mind. To adopt worthless opinions. To adopt worthless opinions. Sadbihi. By these six faults. By these six faults. Bhaktihi. Bhaktihi. Pure devotion. Pure devotion. Vinashyati. Vinashyati. Is destroyed. Is destroyed. It's just so interesting how Srila Prabhupada took these six and went even beyond the scope of persons who are practicing bhakti, but went into such a, an analysis of how this is affecting every conditioned soul and causing uh, all of the problems that we experience in material existence. Of course, in the ultimate sense, it would mean that those persons who, like he said, in the political sphere and so forth, those persons would gradually come to the path of bhakti. Yeah, bhakti-ahara, prayasha, all of these. He analyzed each and, each and every one of these with the solving of the world's problems. Okay, so now <clears throat> read the translation. Bhakti is destroyed by the following six kinds of faults. One, eating too much or collecting more than necessary. Two, endeavors that are opposed to bhakti. Three, useless mundane talks. Four, failure to adopt essential regulations or Fanatical adherence to regulations. Five, association with persons who are opposed to bhakti. And six, greed or the restlessness of the mind to adopt worthless opinions. So the first uh, uh, acharya, his commentary is entitled Upadesh Prakashika. Tika. In the beginning stage of the practice of bhakti, the material proclivity is prominent in the hearts of the sadhakas. 
Therefore, they are unable to subdue the six overwhelming passions described in the first verse. Consequently, in this condition, many tendencies that are very harmful to bhakti develop in the hearts of the sadhaks. In this verse, those injurious tendencies <clears throat> are being described for the benefit of the sadhakas. The word ati ahara means to eat more than required, means to endeavor for worldly objects, or to be engaged in activities that are opposed to bhakti. The word prajalpa means to uselessly criticize and gossip about others, which is a gross misuse of time. Again, the word prajalpa means to uselessly criticize and gossip about others, which is a gross misuse of time. The word niyamagraha, when broken into its constituent parts, has two meanings. The first, niyama plus agraha, means overzealousness in following rules. And number two, niyama plus agraha, failure to accept rules. When the first meaning is applied, it refers to enthusiasm for those rules that yield an inferior result, such as promotion to the heavenly planets, leaving aside the endeavor for the superior attainment of the service of the Lord. I'll read that again. When the first meaning is applied, the first meaning means niyama plus agraha, meaning overzealousness in following rules. So when the first meaning is applied, it refers to enthusiasm for those rules that yield an inferior result, such as the promotion to the heavenly planets, leaving aside the endeavor for the superior attainment of the service of the Lord. <laughs> enthusiasm, basically, for those rules that yield an inferior result. When the second meaning is applied, it refers to indifference towards those rules that nourish bhakti. Indifference. Niyama agraha, failure to accept the rule. The words janasanga mean to give up the association of pure devotees and to keep company with others. In the conversation between Devahuti and Kardava Muni in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 23rd chapter, verse 55, there is a very nice instruction about giving up worldly association. Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika Giridhari Shri Shri Radha Gauranga Giridhari So that verse... We've heard it before. It's been quoted quite often. Sango yak samsmriter he tur asatsu vihito dia sa eva sadushu krito nishsangatvaya kalpate. O Deva, association is the cause of both material bondage and liberation from material existence. So this is between, I'm just going to again check, it's this conversation between Devahuti and Kardava Muni. Okay? So, and then there's another verse going to be quoted, which is the conversation between Lord Kapila Dev and Devahuti. So this first one, he's, I believe it's spoken by Devahuti. Because she's saying, O oh, Deva, to her husband, Kardama Muni. So she's saying, O oh, Deva, association is the cause of both material bondage and liberation from material existence. Wait a second, before I move on, 
I'm going to check this. Three twenty three fifty five. Lamentation. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. I gotta read this chapter again sometime. This is so nice. Devahuti was the daughter of a king, right? Yeah. She was a princess. <clears throat> okay, so this is after the creation of the aerial mansion. Mm. Oh, after. Okay. Yes. And Devahuti, in the company of her handsome husband, situated on an excellent bed that increased sexual desires, could not realize how much time was passing. While the couple, who eagerly longed for sexual pleasure, were thus enjoying themselves by virtue of mystic powers, a hundred autumns passed like a brief span of time. The powerful Kardamamuni was the knower of everyone's heart, and he could grant whatever one desired. <clears throat> Knowing the spiritual soul, he regarded her as half of his body. Dividing himself into nine forms, he impregnated Devahuti with nine discharges of semen. Immediately afterward, on the same day, Devahuti gave birth to nine female children, all charming and every limb and fragrant with the scent of the red lotus flower. This is on the same day. <laughs> These are demigods. <laughs> Different scale of days. When she saw her husband about to leave home, she smiled externally, but at heart she was agitated and distressed. She stood and scratched the ground with her foot, which was radiant with the luster of her gem-like nails. Her head bent down. She spoke in slow, yet charming accents, suppressing her tears. Now we know the story, how she served Cardinal Muni in such austerity and this went on for years and years, right? And then when he came out of his trance and completed his uh, devotional practices, then he saw his wife in that condition. And because he was going to leave home, take sannyas and everything, so therefore uh, he, first of all, she was brought into the ocean, wasn't it? Or some river. But there were all the attendants of Varuna, and they they rejuvenated her body, mm -hmm. because it was just so worn and thin, and just, you know, from so much austerity. So then they uh, they put out all different oils and ointments and everything. And then he created this aerial mansion, and then they went for a tour of the universe, and then he fathered these children. So, but she stood there knowing that her husband was going to be leaving. So she was suppressing her tears, her head bent down. She spoke in slow yet charming accents. Sri Devahuti said, My Lord, you have fulfilled all the promises you gave me, yet, because I am your surrendered soul, you should give me fearlessness also. My dear Brahmana, as far as your daughters are concerned, they will find their own suitable husbands and go away to their respective homes. But who will give me solace after your departure as a sannyasi? Until now, we have simply wasted so much of our time and sense gratification 
neglecting to cultivate knowledge of the Supreme Lord, not knowing your transcendental, the objects of the senses. Nonetheless, let the affinity I have developed for you rid me of all fear. Then she quoted this verse. Association for sense gratification is certainly the path of bondage, but the same type of association performed with a saintly person leads to the path of liberation, even if performed without knowledge. Then she went on, Anyone whose work is not meant to elevate him to religious life, anyone whose religious ritualistic performances do not raise him to renunciation, lead him to devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, must be considered dead although he is breathing. My Lord, surely I have been solidly cheated by the insurmountable illusory energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, for in spite of having obtained your association, which gives liberation from material bondage, I did not seek such liberation. That's the end of that chapter. Mm. I'm going to go to the next one just to see what happens there. So now, recalling the words of Lord Vishnu, the merciful sage Kardama replied as follows to Swayam Bhuva Manu's praiseworthy daughter Devahuti, who was speaking words full of renunciation. She's a demigoddess, or at least on the highest human level, for money. The sage said, Do not be disappointed with yourself, O princess. You are actually praiseworthy. The infallible Supreme Personality of Godhead will shortly enter your womb as your son. You have undertaken sacred vows. God will bless you. Hence, you should worship the Lord with great faith through sensory control, religious observances, austerities, and gifts of your money and charity. The personality of Godhead being worshipped by you will spread my name and fame. He will vanquish the knot of your heart by becoming your son and teaching knowledge of Brahman. Then Sri Maitreya Muni said, Who is he speaking to? Maitreya? Dura. Yes, Vidura. He said, Devahuti was fully faithful and respectful toward the direction of her husband Kardama, who was one of the prajapadis or the generators of human beings in the universe. O oh, great sage, she thus began to worship the master of the universe, the supreme personality of Godhead, who is situated in everyone's heart. After many, many years, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Madhusudan, the killer of the demon Madhu, having entered the semen of Kardama, appeared in Devahuti just as fire comes from wood in a sacrifice. At the time of his descent on earth, demigods in the form of raining clouds sounded musical instruments in the sky. The celestial musicians, the Gandharvas, sang the glories of the Lord, while celestial dancing girls known as Apsaras danced in joyful ecstasy. <clears throat> At the time of the Lord's appearance, the demigods flying freely in the sky showered flowers. All the directions, all the waters, and everyone's mind became very satisfied. Brahma, the firstborn living being, went along with Marichi and other sages to the place of Kardama's hermitage, which was surrounded by the river Sarasvati. Then Maitreya Muni continued, O killer of the enemy, the unborn Lord Brahma, who is almost independent in acquiring knowledge, could understand that a portion of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his quality of pure existence had appeared in the womb of Devahuti just to explain the complete state of knowledge known as Samkhya Yoga. After worshipping the Supreme Lord with gladdened senses and a pure heart, 
for his intended activities as an incarnation. My dear son Kardama, since you have completely accepted my instructions without duplicity showing them proper respect, you have worshipped me properly. Whatever instructions you took from me, you have carried out, and thereby you have honored me. Sons ought to render service to their father exactly to this extent. One should obey the command of his father or spiritual master with due deference, saying, Yes, sir. Lord Brahma then praised Kardamamuni's nine daughters, saying, All your thin-waisted daughters are certainly very chaste. I am sure they will increase this creation by their own descendants in various ways. Therefore, today, please give away your daughters to the foremost of, sa of the sages with due regard for the girls' temperaments and likings, and thereby spread your fame all over the world. O Kardama, I know that the original Supreme Personality of Godhead has now appeared as an incarnation by his internal energy. He is the bestower of all desires by the living, all desired by the living entities. And he has now assumed the body of Kapila Muni. By mystic yoga and the practical application of knowledge from the scriptures, Kapila Muni, who is characterized by his golden hair, his eyes just like lotus petals, and his lotus feet, which bear the marks of lotus flowers, will uproot the deep-rooted desire for work in this material world. Lord Brahma then told Devahuti, My dear daughter of Manu, the same Supreme Personality of Godhead who killed the demon Koitava is now within your womb. He will cut off all the knots of your ignorance and doubt. Then he will travel all over the world. Your son will be the head of all the perfected souls. He will be approved by the acharyas, expert in disseminating real knowledge. And among the people, he will be celebrated by the name Kapila. As the son of Devahuti, he will increase your fame. Sri Maitreya said, After thus speaking to Kardamamuni, and his wife Devahuti, Lord Brahma, the creator of the universe, who is also known as Hamsa, went back to the highest of the three planetary systems on his swan carrier with the four Kumaras and Nara. Ovidura, after the departure of Brahma, Kardamamuni, having been ordered by Brahma, handed over his nine daughters, as instructed, to the nine great sages who created the population of the world. Kardamamuni handed over his daughter Kala to Marichi and another daughter Anasuya to Atri. That's familiar to us. He delivered Shraddha to Angira and Havir Bhu to Pulastya. He delivered Gati to Pulaha, the chaste Kriya to Kratu, Kyati to Brigu, and Arundati to Vashishta. He delivered Shanti to Atarva. Because of Shanti, sacrificial ceremonies are well performed. Thus he got the foremost Brahmanas married, and he maintained them along with their wives. Thus married, the sages took leave of Kardama and departed full of joy, each for his own hermitage. Ovidura. When Kardamamuni understood that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the chief of all the demigods of Vishnu, had descended, Kardama approached him in a secluded place, offered obeisances, and spoke as follows. Kardamamuni said, Oh, after a long time, the demigods of this universe have become pleased with the suffering souls who are in material entanglement because of their own misdeeds. After many births, mature yogis, by complete trance in yoga, endeavor in secluded places to see the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Not considering the negligence of 
you, my dear Lord, who are always increasing the honor of your devotees, having descended in my home just to fulfill your word and disseminate the process of real knowledge. My dear Lord, although you have no material form, you have your own innumerable forms. They truly are your transcendental forms, which are pleasing to your devotees. <clears throat> My dear Lord, your lotus feet are the reservoir that always deserves to receive worshipful homage from all great sages eager to understand the absolute truth. You are in full opulence, renunciation, transcendental fame, knowledge, strength, and beauty. And therefore, I surrender myself unto your lotus feet. I surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead descended in the form of Kabila, who is independently powerful and transcendental, who is the Supreme Person and the Lord of the sum total of matter and the element of time, who is the fully cognizant maintainer of all the universes under the three modes of material nature, and who absorbs the material manifestations after their dissolution. Today, I have something to ask from you, who are the Lord of all living entities. <clears throat> Since I have now been liberated by you from my debts to my Father, and since all my desires are fulfilled, I wish to accept the order of an itinerant mendicant. Renouncing this family life, I wish to wander about, free from lamentation, thinking always of you in my heart. The Personality of God at Kapila said, Whatever I speak, whether directly or in the scriptures, is authoritative in all respects for the people of the world. O oh, Muni, because I told you before that I would become your son, I have descended to fulfill this truth. My appearance in this world is especially to explain the philosophy of Sankhya, which is highly esteemed for self-realization by those desiring freedom from the entanglement of unnecessary material desires. This path of self-realization, which is difficult to understand, has now been lost in the course of time. Please know that I have assumed this body of Kapila to introduce and explain this philosophy to human society again. Now being sanctioned by me, go as you desire, surrendering all your activities to me, conquering insurmountable death, worship me for eternal life. In your own heart, through your intellect, you will always see me, the supreme self-effulgent soul dwelling within the hearts of all living entities. Thus, you will achieve the state of eternal life free from all lamentation and fear. I shall also describe this sublime knowledge, which is the door to spiritual life, to my mother, so that she also can attain perfection and self-realization, ending all reactions to fruitive activities. Thus, she also will be freed from all material fear. Sri Maitreya Muni said, Thus, when Kardama Muni, the progenitor of human society, was spoken to in fullness by his son, Kapila, he circumambulated him, and with a good pacified mind, he at once left for the forest. The sage Kardama accepted silence as a vow in order to think of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and take shelter of him exclusively. Without association, he traveled over the surface of the globe as a sapphire or shelter. He fixed his mind upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Parabrahman, who is beyond cause and effect, 
who manifests the three modes of material nature, who is beyond those three modes, and who is perceived only through unfailing devotional service. Thus, he gradually became unaffected by the false ego of material identity, and he became free from material affection. Undisturbed, equal to everyone, and without duality, he could indeed see himself also. His mind was turned inward, agitated by waves. <clears throat> he thus became liberated from conditioned life and became self-situated in transcendental devotional service to the personality of Godhead Vasudev, the omniscient super-soul within everyone. He began to see that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is seated in everyone's heart and that everyone is existing on him because he is the Supersoul of everyone. Freed from all hatred and desire, Cardinal Muni, being equal to everyone because of discharging uncontaminated devotional service, ultimately attained the path back to Godhead. Gaur Prema. Yes, so now we know the context <laughs> of the verse which uh, Sri Radharaman uh, Das Goswami is quoting in his purport here. And now we know that it's spoken by Devahuti. Very exciting. You know, I have not read that probably since the 70s, I'm ashamed to say. But I'm going to read it again quite soon. Yes. So here's the translation of this verse that she spoke. O Deva, <clears throat> association is the cause of both material bondage and liberation from material existence. When due to ignorance one keeps company with worldly-minded persons who are diverted from the path of bhakti, that association brings about one's material entanglement. When, however, one keeps company with pure devotees of the Lord, that association liberates one from material existence and causes one to obtain the lotus feet of the Lord. Then furthermore, Bhagavan Kapiladev gives the following instructions to Devahuti in the 31st chapter of the third canto, <clears throat> where he's talking about Sangha. He says, Sangam na kuryat prama da sujatu, yogasya param param arurukshu, matsevaya prati labdhatma lapo, vadantiya niraya dvaram asya. Translation. Those who desire to obtain Krishna Prem, which is the ultimate fruit of Bhakti Yoga, should never indulge in illicit association with women. Learned sages who know the absolute truth say that for those who desire liberation from material existence and attainment of the lotus feet of the Lord, illicit connection with women opens wide the door to hell. Then he quotes from the same chapter another verse. Tesh vashan teshu mudheshu kanditat mashva asadushu sangam nakuryaj chocheshu yoshit krida mrigeshu cha. I remember this verse. Uh, one should never associate with foolish, agitated, materialistic men who identify the body as the self who are most deplorable, and who are dancing dogs in the hands of women. It literally says dancing dogs in the verse. Having pointed out the defects of material association, the revealed scriptures, the Shastras, forbid it. The agitation of the mind for compatible objects from associating with persons of many different opinions is known as laulia. So he's gone from uh, 
Vagraha, Janasanga. That was all about Janasanga and now Lolya. So Lolya means the agitation of the mind for compatible objects and the unsteadiness of the mind that results from associating with persons of many different opinions. Unsteadiness of the mind, Lolya. It is known as Lolya. Such unsteadiness of the mind is like an unchaste woman wandering sometimes upon the path of karma, sometimes on the path of yoga, sometimes on the path of jnan, sometimes on the path of bhakti. By this, the predilection for bhakti is destroyed. So that ends his short comment. Now we see here from Bhakti Vinotakur for the final minutes of our evening class. Now his Piyusha Varshani Vritti commentary. Atyahara, Prayasha, Prajalpa, Niyamagraha, Janasanga, and Lolya are six faults that are directly opposed to Bhakti. Number one. The word Atiahara is a compound word formed by combination of the prefix ati, which means too much or excessively, with the word ahara, which means to seize, grasp, or consume for one's own enjoyment. So he's going beyond the eating, because ahara also means to eat. Excessive enjoyment of sense objects through any one of the senses and the endeavor to accumulate in excess of one's requirements are known as atyahara. Devotees who have renounced householder life are forbidden to accumulate material goods. <coughs> Grihasta Vaishnavas must acquire goods sufficient for their maintenance, but if they accumulate beyond their needs, it is known as atyahara. Those who are eager to perform bhajan should not accumulate worldly goods like materialistic sense enjoyers. Number two, the word prayas refers to activities that are opposed to bhakti or performed for the enjoyment of the senses. So any activity which is performed for the enjoyment of the senses comes under prayasa, which we know from Prabhupada's translation is translated as over-endeavor for mundane things which are too difficult to achieve. But here he's, he's saying that the word prayasa refers to activities that are opposed to bhakti or they're performed for the enjoyment of the senses. No, number three, to waste time in useless mundane talks is called prajalpa. Also called the president of the day. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, my dear brother. That is true. But you know what? There's a way of um, connecting that to Krishna. There is a way. Because it's it's in the category of ordinary mundane news. And we have seen that there is no uh, rule against hearing ordinary mundane news. But if somebody goes too far, then it becomes that. But also taking prasadam and then sitting for three hours and just talking, 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 talking. Is that not a joke? Probably. Now I know, I know that it's a kind of, it's also spiritual association. I'm not denying that. Right? Right? Let's be honest now. Yeah, because it's, 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 it creates community, right? We That's true. But what we're talking about is excessive. If it goes to that point where it just goes to something to ourselves, because the only way that we're going to actually get past these six impediments is by being honest and truthful with ourself, right? And, you know, we have to look at it. And we have to say, is 
this really in the category of prajalpa? Or is this a, a, this is a, a discussion that is useful, suitable, and helpful for the development of bhakti? Now, we know, I'll get to, I'll get to you in one second. We know that revealing one's mind to one another is in the category of spiritual association, right? We just have talked about that. Srila Prabhupada talked about it also in his purport. That uh, in the fourth verse of Upadesha Amrita are the six types of association. So if that revealing of the mind and the heart continues on the level of spiritual topic pertaining to our devotional service, pertaining to, you know, we have our, we could call it our mundane life, right? Especially in household life. There's so many material things that have to be looked after. So the execution of one's duties in household life, looking after the children, these are all essential for the, uh, for the practice of bhakti. Because that becomes their duty. Like, for example, Srila Prabhupada told to the ladies, I remember a famous quotation, that you should treat your child as your deity. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? Have you heard that one? Oh. So this is actually the, the duty in household life for both the father and the mother, is to constantly uh, have that child and the love and affection that you're giving to that child, it's because why? Is it only because it's your child? Because even mundane people, they love and have love and affection. Krishna's devotee. Krishna's devotee. Yes. So when there, this is more consciously performed with that intention, that this jiva came to me, I have this duty to raise this child as Krishna's devotee, because this child is a, is a jiva that wanted to come into such situation. So I have my duty. So that is in connection with bhakti. But, you know, we have to be honest, like if we're just going on and on and on, wasting time, that's what we just read. From Radharaman Das Goswami, it is a great waste of time. You see? We should be chanting, or we should be reading, or we should be doing some bhakti. You know? All the time we should try to have Harina with us. Isn't that true? Yeah? We should always try to have Harina in our mind, on our lips, whatever we're doing. We all have that experience where we've endeavored in our life to all try to do that. So I'm just mentioning this, not in a, in a criticizing way or even in a confrontational way. I'm just mentioning it in, re- in relation to what we're discussing here. You have a comment. It's just an interesting side line. Uh, in the book, My Beloved Master, the mm-hmm. book began in Baltimore, I think mm-hmm. it was Santa Maharaj. Yeah. He talked about this brahmacharya who is chanting 64 rounds and always reading. Oh, I remember this one. And he yeah. wouldn't take prasadam with the devotees yes. because they talked too much Pajalpa. Yeah. So he told them, no, better you take with the devotees. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, after some time, because he had no connection with them on an emotional level, right. he left. Yeah. Later on, at the age of 65, he came back and took the Yes, house. he did. So there, it has, it has to Yeah, be because there. he saw that the, the seeds were being planted that were not favorable. Or bhakti. And it was also mentioned there that he should not think, that he was given an instruction that he should not think that the interactions, like the brahmachari sitting together, taking prasadam, laughing, joking, doing this, that, that that is unfavorable for bhakti. But he was thinking that it was. So he secluded himself away, you know. And as a result of that, what happened was material desires started to come. And his mother, uh, somehow or other, she, they contacted him. She came back when he was 65 years old, but, uh, you know, a lot of time lost, uh, which he could have possibly gone forward like that. So, yeah, I mean, look, I'm recognizing the need of the devotees to um, be together 
in their activity, especially of taking prasadam, going to the noon artik, and all the kids beautifully singing and everything, dancing. And this is all very favorable. But if it just goes on and on for hours of just sitting and talking, and the topics begin to enter into the realm of bhakti, and it comes under the category of prajalpa. So all of us are guilty of that. We're all guilty of that. But we try to improve. <laughs> okay, we went just a little over. Gaur Premanande. Jai Shri Ubadesha Muritam Ki Jai. Jai Shri Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai. Jai Shri Gauranga Mahaprabhu Ki Jai. Jai Shri Kapila Dev Devahuti Kartamamuni Ki Jai. Jai Shri Grantara Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Samaveta Pakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Nitai Gaur Premanande. Pancha Kalpatulvascha Kripasindavivacha Patitanam Bhavanevyo Vaishnavivyo Namo